Richard Hugh McCaw ONZ is a retired New Zealand professional rugby union player. He captained the national team, the All Blacks, in 110 out of his 148 test matches, and won two Rugby World Cups. He has won the World Rugby Player of the Year award a joint record three times and was the most capped test rugby player of all time from August 2015 to October 2020. McCaw was awarded World Rugby Player of the Decade in 2021. Richie is also the winner for New Zealand Sportsman of the Decade Award, the highest sporting honour a sports individual can achieve in New Zealand. McCaw was the first all-black to reach 100 caps, and the first rugby union player to win 100 tests. He was the most capped player in rugby union history with 148 caps, having overtaken Brian O'Driscoll's record in 2015 and losing the record to Alan Wynne-Jones in 2020. McCaw has also equaled the record for most appearances at the Rugby World Cup with Jason Leonard. McCaw predominantly played in the open side flanker position for the New Zealand, Crusaders and Canterbury teams, but also played as a blind side flanker in No. 8. During McCaw's career, Canterbury won the NPC five times, and the Crusaders won four Super Rugby titles. In addition to winning two World Cups, the All Blacks won seven Tri-Nations titles, completed three successful Grand Slam tours and won the Bledisloe Cup eight times. He made his debut in 2001 for the Crusaders, and was selected for the All Blacks 2001 end-of-year tour, despite having played only eight minutes of Super 12 rugby. His debut for New Zealand was against Ireland, where he was awarded Man of the Match. McCaw became a regular selection for New Zealand, only missing a few games due to recurring concussions. In 2004 he was appointed captain of the All Blacks, whom he led at the 2007 Rugby World Cup. After their elimination in the quarterfinals, his captaincy came under criticism, but he was retained and eventually led the team to consecutive Rugby World Cup titles in 2011 and 2015. Becoming one of only 21 players who have won the Rugby World Cup on multiple occasions. Otago Boys High School, Dunedin. Richie McCaw boarded at the school from 1994 to 1998. McCaw's great-great-grandfather immigrated to New Zealand from the Scottish borders in 1893, and settled in the Hakatarmea Valley, Waimati District, South Canterbury. McCaw's father took over the family farm and his mother was a teacher at Kuro. On New Year's Eve 1980, Richard Hugh McCaw was born in the nearby town of Amaro. He grew up on his parents' farm along with his sister Joanna. McCaw started flying gliders with his grandfather J. H. Jim McCaw, a Tempest pilot during World War II credited with shooting down 20 V-1 missiles, when he was nine years old. He played rugby for the local Kuro Rugby Club as a youngster, but it was not until 1994, when he boarded at Otago Boys High School in Dunedin, that he started to take the game seriously. In his last year at Otago Boys High, McCaw was head boy, Proxim Accessit to the Ducks and played in the school's first 15. McCaw came to the attention of national selectors during a five-all draw with Rotorua Boys High School in the 1998 New Zealand Secondary School's rugby final in Christchurch. However, he failed to make the New Zealand Secondary School's team, losing out to Sam Harding, Angus MacDonald and Hale Teapole. With Sam Harding moving south to study at the University of Otago, McCaw headed to Christchurch's Lincoln University to study agricultural science and pursue his rugby interests. He achieved all but two papers for his Bachelor of Agricultural Science degree before deciding to pursue his rugby career instead. He received an honorary doctorate in recognition of his sporting achievements in April 2012. In 1999, McCaw was selected in the New Zealand Under-19 squad, which won the World Championship in Wales. During that series, McCaw realised his all-black dream could be attainable. The following year he was selected in the New Zealand Under-21 squad and debuted for Canterbury in the National Provincial Championship against North Harbour. On March 31, 2001, he made his Super Rugby debut with the Crusaders, playing a few minutes in a losing effort against the Hurricanes. That year he only played twice for the Crusaders, both times as a substitute, for a total of just eight minutes playing time. He did however play a full season with NPC champions Canterbury and captain the New Zealand under-21s. Richie's paternal fourth great-grandfather was Seth Smith, who built large proportions of Belgravia and Mayfair in London in the 1830s, related through his great-great-grandmother Sarah Annette Seth Smith Macaw. Although the then 20-year-old Macaw had only played 17 matches for Canterbury, John Mitchell, the new all-black coach, selected him for the 2001 end-of-year tour to Ireland, Scotland, and Argentina. This led Josh Kronfeld, a former all-black openside flanker, to criticise the selection, 
you might as well just give all black jerseys to everybody. The fact they picked guys off one NPC season is bloody incredible. McCaw's debut international test was against Ireland at Lansdowne Road on November 17, 2001. His first touch of the game resulted in a knock-on when he was hit in a tackle and New Zealand were trailing the Irish 16-7 at halftime. In the second half the All Blacks recovered to win 40-29 and McCaw was named man of the match, receiving a standing ovation at the post-match function. A turning point came in the second half when McCaw was able to steal the ball from Ireland, which led to a try to left-wing Jonah Lomu. After the match McCaw recalled the experience, it was a hell of a stadium to play at, a real rugby stadium, a big crowd, something I'll always remember. Very special. McCaw played all three tests on the tour, with the All Blacks beating Scotland 37-6 and winning 24-20 against Argentina. At the end of season rugby awards, McCaw was selected as both the New Zealand Rugby Football Union Under-21 and Air New Zealand NPC Division 1 Player of the Year. In the lead-up to the 2003 World Cup McCaw was a regular player for Canterbury, the Crusaders and the All Blacks. In 2002 and 2003 the Crusaders competed in the Super Rugby Final, beating the Brumbies in 2002 and losing to the Blues in 2003. The Canterbury Provincial Rugby team lost the semi-final to the eventual winners Auckland in 2002. McCaw and the other All Blacks were rested during the 2003 National Provincial Championship. In 2002 McCaw played for the All Blacks against the touring Ireland team and in the Tri-Nations against Australia and South Africa. Of the six 2002 test matches McCaw played in, five were won by New Zealand with the only loss to Australia. The 14-16 loss occurred in New Zealand's third Tri-Nations match and ensured the Bledisloe Cup stayed with Australia. During the All Blacks match against South Africa in Durban a pitch invader attacked Irish referee David McHugh as a scrum was being set, dislocating his shoulder in the process. McCaw and AJ Venter wrestled the assailant off the referee and, according to McHugh, if they had not got involved his shoulder would have been broken. McCaw was rested, along with 20 other members of the Tri-Nation squad, from the 2002 end-of-year tour to Europe. In 2002 McCaw was voted as Newcomer of the Year by the International Rugby Players Association. This award is voted on by all international players, with players not allowed to vote for members of their own team. After another successful campaign with the Crusaders in 2003, McCaw was again selected as first choice open side flanker for the All Blacks. In June, he was involved in a narrow 13 15 defeat at home to England, was a non playing reserve in a 55 3 victory against Wales, and played in a 31 23 win over France. The 2003 All Blacks retained the Tri Nations title, regained the Bledisloe Cup for the first time since 1997, and were ranked second behind England leading into the World Cup. McCaw was selected as open side flanker for the 2003 All Blacks World Cup squad and played in every game at the tournament. New Zealand won all their pool games and beat South Africa in the quarter finals to qualify for a semi final matchup against Australia. In an upset, the Australians defeated the All Blacks, knocking them out of the tournament. At the end of the season, awards McCaw received the Kel Tremaine Trophy for the New Zealand Rugby Union Player of the Year. The Crusaders finished as runner ups in the 2004 Super 12 season losing the final to the Brumbies. Following the World Cup, John Mitchell was dropped as all-black coach and replaced by Graham Henry. McCaw was selected as first-choice open side flanker and made vice-captain. In the first test against England he was escorted off the field after suffering concussion following a clash of heads with fellow all-black Xavier Rush. He was a late withdrawal from the second England test and then played 70 minutes against Argentina before again leaving the field due to dizziness. Still suffering headaches a month later, he withdrew from the rest of the home campaign and the 2004 Tri-Nations to focus on recovery. McCaw returned to Captain Canterbury to the finals at the tail end of the NPC season. In November 2004 he returned for the All Blacks end-of-season tour to Italy, Wales, and France. He was made captain at the age of 23 for the first time against Wales as regular captain Tana Umaga was rested. In April 2005, while captaining the Crusaders, McCaw again suffered a concussion. He was stretchered off the field two minutes into the game after attempting a tackle on Bull's prop Richard Bands. After the incident, McCaw visited a young boy in hospital who had broken his neck playing rugby and started to question whether he should be playing the game. Another paraplegic in the ward told him he had broken his neck swimming on holiday in Fiji, convincing McCaw that it could happen anywhere, and you may as well do what you enjoy. A month later, in May 2005, McCaw returned to training with the Crusaders and led them in their semi-final and final victories. 
Macaw returned to international rugby in 2005, playing in the 91-0 victory over Fiji before the British and Irish Lions arrived. He then played the first two tests against the Lions, including a record 48-18 victory in Wellington. The All Blacks defeated the touring Lions 3-0 in the series. McCaw was part of the successful Tri-Nations campaign and Grand Slam end-of-year tour. He missed the game against England after suffering his third serious head knock against Ireland. Despite his injury concerns, McCaw was shortlisted for the 2005 IRB International Player of the Year, which was won by all-black teammate Dan Carter. New captain McCaw leading a Hawkeye against France in 2006 McCaw led the Crusaders to the Super Rugby title again in 2006. In May 2006, at the age of 25 and after 36 test matches, McCaw was named captain of the All Blacks. His first two games as regular captain were against Ireland and New Zealand, while a separate squad led by Jerry Collins was named to travel to Argentina for a one-off game. McCaw started his captaincy with victory over Ireland and then mentored stand-in captain Jerry Collins in Argentina. New Zealand emerged as 2006 Tri-Nations champions and retained the Bledisloe Cup. A successful European tour saw comfortable victories against England, France twice and Wales. McCaw was captain in every match and after being shortlisted in 2002, 2003 and 2005 was named the 2006 IRB International Player of the Year. Because 2007 was a World Cup year, all black management decided that a select group of 22 players, including McCaw, would undergo reconditioning by not playing in the first seven rounds of the Super 14. McCaw returned to the Crusaders in the eighth round and helped them reach the semifinals. New Zealand then beat a below-strength France team in two tests and won a one-off test against Canada. McCaw started on the bench for the Canadian match, with Reuben Thorne returning as captain. The Tri-Nations was shortened because of the World Cup, with each team playing the other two teams twice. Led by McCaw, New Zealand again dropped just one game retaining the Tri-Nations crown and the Bledisloe Cup. 2007 World Cup The 2007 World Cup was held in France, Scotland, and Wales. The All Blacks were in a pool that included Italy, Portugal, Scotland, and Romania. The All Blacks comfortably made it through the pool play with scores of 76-14, 108-13, 40-0 and 85-8 respectively. McCall made just three appearances due to Henry's rotation policy. In the quarterfinals the All Blacks lost to France 18-20, resulting in New Zealand's earliest exit from a World Cup. With semi-final exits after being among the favourites at the 1991, 1999 and 2003 World Cups, they were once again accused of choking on the world's biggest stage. An emotional macaw could not hide his disappointment at the aftermatch press conference, if I knew the answers we would have sorted it out. We will be thinking about it for a long time. McCaw denied New Zealand's easy run into the quarterfinals played a part in the loss a lot of the guys have been through this before, they've played big test matches. Graham Henry's policy of using squad rotation and resting key players during the Super 14 was criticised. McCaw also came under attack. He was accused of not inspiring his team, lacking the ability to change policy when Plan A was not working and not providing enough leadership on the field. McCaw in London, 2008 Despite much speculation that Henry would lose the all-black coaching job to coach Robbie Deans, he was retained on a contract for the next two years, later extended to include the 2011 World Cup. He immediately stated that he would retain McCaw as his captain. Robbie Deans instead signed with the Australian Rugby Union, becoming head coach of Australia. In Dean's last season as Crusaders coach they won the Super Rugby title for the seventh time. Ireland and England toured to New Zealand in June 2008 and the All Blacks came away with a hard-fought win against Ireland, and two comfortable victories against England. McCaw tore a ligament in his ankle against England and missed the start of the Tri-Nations. Rodney Suyalo was made stand-in captain and started the Tri-Nations with a win and two losses. McCaw returned for the fourth game and the All Blacks won the remaining three matches to retain the Tri-Nations title in Bledisloe Cup. McCaw was seen as an inspiration after his return from injury, with Henry rating his performance in the 19-0 win in South Africa as his best so far for the All Blacks. In 2008 a fourth Bledisloe match was played in Hong Kong with the intention of expanding the game of rugby and in a close 19-14 game McCaw scored the match-winning try. The Grand Slam tour to the United Kingdom and Ireland resulted in victories over Scotland, Ireland, Wales and England. During 2008 McCall won every test he captained, and a total of 26 out of 28 games he played in at all levels. 
the All Blacks won 13 of a record 15 tests, retained the Bledisloe Cup and Tri-Nations Trophy, completed the Grand Slam and reclaimed the World No. 1 ranking from South Africa. Macaw finished 2008 by making his debut for the Barbarians against Australia at Twickenham in an 11-18 loss. The Crusaders, under new coach Todd Blackadder, had a slow start to the 2009 season, losing four of their first five games. They recovered to finish fourth on the table, losing the semi-final at Loftus vs. Feld to the Bulls. Macaw injured his knee and missed the start of the international season, returning for the Tri-Nations tournament. South Africa beat the All Blacks in every match to win the title and regain the number one ranking, with New Zealand beating Australia three times to finish second. It was the first time New Zealand had not won the competition in five years and the fifth time since the Tri-Nations started in 1996. A fourth Bledisloe test against Australia was played in Japan before New Zealand toured Europe. Although New Zealand won every match on tour, an earlier loss to France and three defeats by the South Africans were the most suffered by the All Blacks in a season since Macaw joined the team in 2001. Despite the team's relatively poor season, Macaw was named the IRB International Player of the Year for a second time. The 2010 season started in much the same way with the Crusaders finishing fourth during the round-robin stage and losing to the Bulls in the semifinal. During the season Macaw played his 100th Super Rugby game in a losing effort against the Cape Town-based Stormers. New Zealand recorded victories over the touring Ireland and Wales teams, Ireland losing their match by a record 66-28 after number 8 Jamie Heaslip received a red card for kneeing Macaw in the head. The All Blacks went through the Tri-Nations undefeated with the final game of the tournament against Australia marking Macaw's 52nd time captaining the All Blacks, surpassing Sean Fitzpatrick as New Zealand's most capped test captain. The fourth Bledisloe Cup match was again scheduled for Hong Kong and Australia ended a 10-match losing streak to the All Blacks. It was to be the only loss the All Blacks would suffer that season as they went on to win another Grand Slam tour, defeating England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. In the match against Ireland Macaw, along with teammate Mills Mulina played in their 93rd Test match passing Sean Fitzpatrick to become the most capped All Blacks. At the end of the year Macaw was named the IRB International Player of the Year for the second successive season and the New Zealand Sportsperson of the Year at the Halberg Awards. Richie Macaw holding the William Webb Ellis Trophy after the 2011 World Cup final during preseason training in January 2011 Macaw injured his foot. Subsequent x-rays revealed that he had received a stress fracture in the fifth metatarsal of his right foot. It was determined his best chance of recovery was to undergo an operation where a pin was inserted. As a result, McCaw missed the opening two months of the Super Rugby season. During the All Blacks' third Rugby World Cup pool match against France, McCaw became the first All Black to reach 100 test caps. However, it was also during this match McCaw re-aggravated his foot injury. In order to rest his injury, he was forced to skip the more physical aspects of training and miss the All Blacks final pool match against Canada. Prior to the quarterfinal against Argentina Macaw decided against having another X-ray. Following the reoccurrence of his injury it was uncertain whether Macaw could continue to play for the All Blacks, this forced the coaching staff to develop contingency plans and Matt Todd was called into the All Black training squad. Macaw was able to continue to play throughout the World Cup tournament and lifted the Webb Ellis Trophy after a tense 8-7 victory over France. This was the lowest score in a final in World Cup history. After the final, the all-black coach Graham Henry stated he can hardly walk and how he played today I just don't know, and he acknowledged the all-blacks probably would not have won without him. Following the World Cup x-ray showed that the screw in his foot, necessary to stop the deterioration of the original injury had caused a second fracture. The fracture again required a further operation. After the Rugby World Cup Macaw was selected in the RWC Dream Team. This team was determined by public vote, with over 160,000 votes cast. In addition, for the second successive year Macaw was named the New Zealand Sportsperson of the Year at the Halberg Awards. Under new coach Steve Hansen, the All Blacks won 12 tests, drew one and only lost one test in 2012, as well as winning the new rugby championship with a 100% winning record. During this time Macaw overtook George Gregan for most times on the winning side with 94. He also recorded his 100th win against South Africa in Dunedin. Macaw was a nominee for the IRB Player of the Year award but lost out to teammate Dan Carter. In the first half of 2013, in order to rest his body and improve his chances of playing in the 2015 Rugby World Cup Macaw enforced the sabbatical clause in his Nsurfu contract. As a result, he only played the latter rounds of Super Rugby 
and missed the 2013 French Test Series. He later returned to captain the All Blacks as they successfully defended the rugby championship. During this campaign, Macaw equaled the record as captaining the most test matches. Macaw subsequently overtook this record when playing in Japan on November 2, 2013. Following the All Blacks' victory over the Springboks in Ellis Park, Macaw has played and won at every major rugby test stadium. Along with Kieran Reid, Macaw led the All Blacks to a perfect season in 2013, winning 14 out of 14. Macaw captained New Zealand for the 100th time on November 22, 2014 in the end-of-year international against Wales. He is the first rugby union player to achieve 100 caps as captain. On August 15, 2015, Macaw surpassed Ireland's Brian O'Driscoll world record, as the most capped rugby player when he won his 142nd cap against Australia in the Bledisloe Cup. He would go on to hold this title for five years until October 31, 2020 when Welsh captain Alan Wynne-Jones got his 149th cap. On October 31, 2015, Macaw captained New Zealand to retain the Rugby World Cup after a 34-17 win against Australia in the final at Twickenham. During the tournament he received a yellow card for foot-tripping in the opening game against Argentina. On November 19, 2015, Macaw announced his retirement from rugby. Despite often being the captain of the team Macaw only occasionally lead the All Blacks when it came to performing the Hakka before each game. Eleven times he led the Ka mate version of the Hakka passing the role to other players for the Kappa Opango Hakka. Macaw predominantly played at open side flanker, although he has played in the other loose forward positions of blind side flanker and number eight for the Crusaders. The open side flanker binds to the side of the scrum farthest from the touchline and it is usually one of the first players to reach a breakdown. In 2008, Macaw told the IRB, my main role as a flanker is, defensively, to tie in with the back line to ensure that the defense works well. On attack I think my primary role at first phase is to look after our ball. You attack the back line and. I'm usually the first person there to make sure we secure that ball. Thirdly I put pressure on breakdowns and make sure I disturb their ball and try to turn their ball over. Macaw has been described as the best open side flanker of all time. He has been awarded the IRB Player of the Year a record three times and has been nominated on eight occasions. When he received the IRB Player of the Year award for the third time former Australian lock and award chairperson John Eels described him as an outstanding captain, a world-class player and a role model for our sport. Along with Dan Carter, he is seen as one of the most influential members of the All Blacks. Macaw considers his ability to anticipate play as one of his most important skills. Australian open side David Pockick, who was also shortlisted for the IRB award, admires the way he reads the game as well as his ability to read the referee. One of Macaw's strengths is his ability to reinvent himself. For example, he adapted quickly to changes in the breakdown laws and the 2010 new IRB law interpretations, and, over time, other areas of his game. Not all agree with Macaw's playing style and many believe that he pushes the boundaries of legality. He has been labelled a cheat by both former South Africa coach Peter de Villiers and former Australian coach Bob Dwyer. Longtime Springboks lock Victor Matfield said in 2010 that the referees let him get away with murder at the breakdown. Shortly after the 2011 Rugby World Cup final, veteran France back rower Emanuel Harinordiqui criticised Macaw saying that he played the whole Match in hour, Francis, Camp. Former Australian coach Eddie Jones and flanker Phil Waugh say he does no more than any other good open side. But his skill at judging how the referee will interpret the breakdown is the main reason for his success. McCaw admits that he tests the referee early to know what you can get away with and that only an idiot would not adapt to their rulings. Teammate Aaron Mauger, along with many New Zealand fans, have suggested that McCaw's influence and playing style has made him a target for illegitimate play. International players Phil Waugh, Jamie Heaslip, Marcus Horan, Lote Tuckery, Andy Powell, Dylan Hartley, Quade Cooper, Dean Grayling, Kevin McLaughlin and Scott Higginbottom have been accused of making cheap shots on Macaw. He has even been on the receiving end from his all-black teammates when playing for the Crusaders, with Nemia Tialata, Jerry Collins and Ali Williams becoming frustrated with his play. According to McCaw what happens on the field stays on the field and if he gets extra attention it is because he must be doing something right. In 2012, Wallabies coach Robbie Deans and selectors wager the potential returns in finishing games with two open side flankers on the field as a way to counter McCaw. In September 2012 after the All Blacks v South African test in Dunedin, 
Then South African coach Hank Meyer said that Macaw was the greatest rugby player the world has ever seen. Following the All Blacks win over Wallabies to claim their third World Cup, All Blacks coach Steve Hansen praised Macaw's and Dan Carter's career efforts. Distinguishing Macaw from Carter, Richie is the best All Black we have ever had and Dan is a close second, said Hansen. The only thing that separates them is Richie has played 148 matches at flanker, which is unheard of, you put your body on the line every time you go there. The challenge for the other guys now is to try and become as great as him and Dan. In January 2013 it was reported that he had been seeing hockey player Gemma Flint for the past six months. Macaw announced his engagement to Flint in January 2016. They married on January 14, 2017. Their daughter Charlotte was born in December 2018 and second daughter Grace followed in May 2021. His other sporting passion is flying and he was made an honorary squadron leader in the Royal New Zealand Air Force in 2010 and was promoted to honorary wing commander in September 2016. Macaw was taught to fly gliders by his grandfather J.H. Jim Macaw who flew more than 300 missions in the Second World War. In 2009 he convinced the head of the Discovery Network in Australia and New Zealand to do a show about gliding. They filmed a Macaw gliding at Omarama on the Extreme Sports Series Sportstar Insider which was hosted by Australian former rugby league footballer Andrew Engshausen. After the 2010 Canterbury earthquake he auctioned a personal flying lesson through Trade Me to raise money for the badly damaged Hororata St. John's Church. He is also raising money for a young Samoan who broke his neck playing rugby and whose village was destroyed in the 2009 Samoa earthquake and tsunami. It was revealed at his retirement announcement in 2015 that Macaw would work at Christchurch Helicopters, where he is a director and shareholder, and was obtaining a commercial helicopter license. Macaw has since obtained said license and has continued working as a helicopter pilot. He flew several rescue and reconnaissance missions following the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake that struck the South Island. He also performed milk drops around rural areas of New Zealand while having an endorsement with Fonterra, in which his sister and her husband are dairy farmers. In 2010, Macaw and Dan Carter were on a $750,000 New Zealand dollars a year contract that saw them through to the end of the 2011 Rugby World Cup, making them the highest paid rugby players in New Zealand at the time. This contract would still have applied if they had not been selected for the World Cup squad. In 2019, World Rugby inducted Macaw to its Hall of Fame, alongside Shiggy Kono, Os Durant, Peter Facialofa, Graham Henry, and Diego Ormikia. Macaw, after his investiture as a member of the Order of New Zealand by the Governor-General, Sir Jerry Perry, at Government House, Wellington, in April 2016 and December 2011. Then Prime Minister John Key revealed that he had asked Macaw about the possibility of a knighthood in the 2012 New Year Honours, but that Macaw had turned it down. According to Key, he made the call that he's still in his playing career and it didn't feel quite right for him, that day where he's no longer on the pitch may be the right time for him. No formal offer was ultimately made. Macaw was appointed a member of New Zealand's highest honour, the Order of New Zealand, in the 2016 New Year Honours. The honour surpassed the knighthood he had previously turned down prior to his retirement because only 20 living New Zealanders can gain membership at any one time. Thanks for watching.